Today we're going to be tying the Silver Doctor Dry Fly on a size 10 clink hammer hook by Sabre. The thread we're using is 8 aught unithread in dark gray. Go ahead and your thread on and wrap it back to about the mid bend of the hook. The reason we're tying this fly today is I had a conversation while visiting my father with my uncle and they were discussing flies they used back in the day while being taught by their grandfather which would be my great grandfather the yard of fly fishing and the silver doctor was one of the flies that they used often back then this is really the first time I was hearing about it I don't remember them tying it back in the 60s or 70s when I was around but this is something your grandfather had taught them. This is a dry fly. What I'm doing is going ahead and prep a wing by grabbing a mallard flank in yellow and stripping back the feathers, the barbarels that I'm not going to use right away. So right now we'll just go ahead and set it aside. We'll get back to that in a minute. Next we're going to grab this red bucktail, something I normally would use for Mickey fins or clousers. We're going to use the hair on the very bottom of the bucktail that's the finest, softest hair, something I normally wouldn't use. Throw it in the stacker, stack it up, and we're going to use a little pinch, just enough for a tailing material, just about that much hair. Take it out and lay it right on top of the shank of the hook. You're going to measure out just about one half of the shank of the hook for the tail. You don't need a lot of tail here, just enough to, to have a little red uh, little red dirt there maybe. Good wrap it in. Not a lot of thread pressure, just nice and gentle. The more thread pressure you put, the more you're going to splay out that tail. So if you wrap it in gently, it'll all stay together. So after you wrap back up a couple wraps, you can increase your thread pressure without having to worry about splaying everything out. You get back up to the mid top of the hook or shank of the hook here. Go ahead and cut away your excess. Make sure you cut it away nice and tight there so you don't have any extra little uh, chunks of hair floating around on you there. And for the body, we're going to use this metallic thread. This metallic thread is normally used for quilting or embroidery. Something my wife got me at the quilt shop. I've used it before on lightning bugs or other nymphs. But it also works great for a silver body. Let's start it on over top of your uh, black thread there. And take your tying thread, put it in your bobbin cradle, cut away the tag end of the metallic thread, the, it's called Wonderfill I do believe the metallic thread, it's rather expensive but she got her on clearance, that's why she picked it up for me, I got a whole bunch of it, different colors, and try to evenly wrap it back all the way to the start of the tail. And as you wrap back, try to cover as much of the material that you can. But just make sure that on the way back forward that you keep everything even. And try to cover all the gaps that you left, if you left any at all.
want to get to the top here, take your tying thread out of the bobbin cradle and tie off your metallic thread. Just tie from behind it, then up and over it. Give it a couple good wraps, make sure it's good and secure. And go ahead and cut away your metallic thread, leaving your tying thread. Now we're going to tie in our wing. This is the feather that I grabbed earlier. I'm going to take all the fluff off the bottom. That way it just doesn't get in the way. Makes it a little easier to work with. As you seen earlier, I stripped back the part of the feather that I'm not going to use. And I'm going to snip the very top off, right at the base, leave myself a big V. When selecting your feather, you have to be conscious on how long the barbarals are. If it's too short, your wings are going to be too short. So you kind of have to measure about a shank and a half length of feather. That way it turns out just the way you need it. Go ahead and start by laying the feather on top, give it one single wrap, and that did not look right at all. So I took it up, put a little more length forward, just for a little bigger wing, and we're going to do the same. While holding the wing, just one wrap over top of it. Go ahead and release it. Check everything out. See if it's the length you want. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and tie it in. Give it a few wraps to secure the feather on top of the hook. And a few wraps forward, pick up your wing, wrap in front of it, and you, now you can split your wing. It already has a natural split to it, but just make sure you find it and even everything out. And take your thread and do a just a one turn figure eight to keep everything separated. You don't need to get too crazy here. It'll keep keep it nice. You've already split it. And the trick is to also tie in front and behind your wing to keep it uh, even. Now we're going to add our blue barred hackle feather that I dyed with Kool-Aid. Here's one that I dyed that was not barred. Go ahead and strip the very ends off. Giving yourself a little bit of bare stem there. It was real easy dyeing these feathers. All I did was put some hot water in the kettle and put a about a cup of vinegar in a bowl, boiled the water, I put the packet of Kool-Aid into the vinegar and I added the boiling water and then I added the feathers, swished them around for a little while. And I was actually surprised how well they came out. Go ahead and tie it in. 
pretty simple to tie, just wrap it forward about four turns behind, a couple turns in front there. When you get to the front and you felt that you wrapped enough there, just go ahead and tie it off real simple, just up and over top of the feather, making sure you don't capture anything you don't want to capture. About three turns and you go ahead and cut it away. Be real careful when you're cutting the stem of the feather away that you don't snip any of the barbels making your hackle too uh, short there. Take your whip or your half hitch tool and give it a couple half hitches. Be careful that you don't push too hard against your hackle. You want to make sure it's still looks rather full when you're all done and cut your thread away. So for the most part, there you have it, your silver Dr. Fly. You can go ahead and add a little Sally Hansen's to the thread to secure it and also to the very tip of the back wing case so it does not come apart on you on the first fish. And I want to add that uh, in conversation with my father and my uncle, my uncle told me that every time he asked my father what fly he used after he caught a big trout, and my father would always say, the silver doctor. So there you have it. I actually tested this fly rather extensively to make sure it, it's going to ride well and it rides perfectly sits a little low in the water with the silver metallic thread but the wing case keeps it right on the surface so it looks like a nice little emerger and works well all right hope you like the video hope you uh, enjoy a little vintage fry time if you do give me a little like and subscribe and I hope I earned your uh, subscription today stay tuned for more and stay safe out there and catch a couple fish. See you next time.